this is going to be a really simple straight to the point video on how can you go to heaven now i assume most people that listen here online know how to go to heaven but just for those who may stumble across this channel and have no idea how to go to heaven i'm going to tell you now in first john 5 13 it says these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you have eternal life. That is, that you're saved. <clears throat> the first thing is you need to realize your guilt of sin. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. Everybody's sinned. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it describes to us the gospel. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. See that? You can't even give the gospel to somebody without mentioning their sins so anybody that tells you that uh, don't tell anybody they're a sinner they're not even telling you all about the gospel if they say that because it says how that Christ died for our sins that's why he died that's why he shed his blood how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so the gospel is this jesus christ died he shed his blood on the cross it was for your sins he was buried and rose again the third day and in ephesians 1 7 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So, your forgiveness of sins is through his blood. He shed his blood on the cross. And in Romans 3.23, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you're a sinner and you need forgiveness. The way to get forgiveness is is to get the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to you. So you know that you're a sinner, right? You realize that. The next thing you need to realize is that you cannot pay for your sins yourself. You've done all these sins, and even if you just did one sin, one sin is enough to do you in. You need to realize you can't pay for those sins yourself. You need to realize that Jesus Christ is the one that paid for your sins. And how did he do it? Well, like I just showed you, the gospel. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Just like it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. So he died for your sins on the cross and shed his blood. He took your place. Your sins are paid for. All your sins are paid for. Past, present, and future. So if they are paid for, there's no need for you to try and pay for them yourself. There's no need for you to try and say, I'm going to live a good life to pay for all the bad things I've done. Or I'm going to live a good life to make up for all the bad things I've done. Because you can't do it. You can't live good enough to pay for them. You can't undo what's already been done. You couldn't pay for them if you wanted to. Only Jesus Christ could pay for your sins, and the thing is, he already did. And the reason he's able to pay for your sins is because he's without sin. He did no sin. And he was made sin for us even though he knew no sin. That's what Hebrews 4.15 says. It says he is without sin. 1 Peter 2.22 says he did no sin. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 says he knew no sin. 
Only he can pay for your sins because he's sinless and because Jesus Christ is God. It took a sinless Savior to pay for your sins or it wouldn't have worked. If Jesus was just a regular man or just a good man or just some prophet and not God, it wouldn't have worked. But you see, every sin you ever committed, think about your sins you committed in the past, in the present day, and even the sins you've yet to commit in the future. It was all placed in the Lord Jesus Christ and he paid for all your sins. And he's the only one that could have done it. And you see, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. So there's a price to pay for sin. The wages of sin is death. Not just a physical death, but an eternal death in the lake of fire. There's a, a physical death and a second death. The second death is when you're cast into the lake of fire. And that's where you'll go if you try to pay for your sins yourself you see jesus paid for your sin but you gotta accept the payment and if you don't accept the payment you'll spend an eternity paying for those sins so he died for your sins he was buried and then he was resurrected on the third day this proves that he's god in the flesh if he was a sinner like me and you then he would have just stayed dead just like me and you would have but he didn't stay dead so you realize you're a sinner. You realize Jesus Christ paid the payment for your sin. When he died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and resurrected. Now, all you have to do is accept the payment for salvation. Even though Jesus paid for all your sin, um, you still have to accept the payment. Your sins are paid for, but you've got to accept the payment. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Do you want to be saved? Then you need to accept the payment. He told you what the payment was. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried. He was resurrected. So Jesus Christ did all the work for you. There isn't any work you can do to make salvation easier, to obtain it, to, to keep it. Because Jesus Christ already did all that. He already did all the work. The only works involved in your salvation is the works that Jesus already did himself. There's no work you can do. Jesus made a complete payment. Uh, he didn't just put a down payment on it and expects you to pay the rest he paid all of it you just got to accept the payment and it's as easy as just like he's standing in front of you you're just sticking your hand out and taking it it's as easy as he put it in a glass like a liquid and you just drink it it's just simple you just you take it you receive it it's not like uh, god's up there in heaven and he's he's uh he's um he, and he's got it behind his back and you got to say the magic word or you got to somehow uh, find a, solve a riddle and look for it like a needle in a haystack to get it. No, it's like God is up in heaven and he wants you to be saved so much and he's got it right in front of your face. He just wants you to take it. And it says in 1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Why would Jesus Christ come down and live a sinless life, suffer the life of being down here, and die on the cross, and then not let you have salvation if you want it? You see, a lot of people make salvation so hard. They, do, uh, they make it seem like, well, you gotta beg God. You gotta jump through all these hurdles to get saved. No. God wants you to be saved more than you ever wanted to be saved. And just like you can't do anything good enough to save yourself, you also can't do anything bad enough to make you unqualified to receive the Lord's payment for sin. You see, a lot of people say, well, if you did this or this, or 
you went so long without believing on Jesus Christ or you crossed some deadline so now therefore you can't be saved that's nonsense if you can't do anything good enough to save yourself it's not possible that you can do anything bad enough to cause you not to be able to get saved you see if you know you're a sinner you know you're going to hell you know you need to be saved and you want to be saved you could be saved you see many men go to hell simply because they just refuse to accept the payment if you are listening to this you're alive you're breathing you can accept the payment it's like having a get out of prison free card and not accepting the card and then going to spend a life sentence in prison when you could have just took the card the get out of prison free card and just went home that would be crazy you could have been free. Uh, you don't have to go to hell for eternity. You can be free. You can have eternal life. You just accept the payment. So you know you're a sinner. You've done a lot of bad things. And sin is more than just the extreme stuff. We're all, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. As the guilty sinner that you are, you need to come to Jesus Christ and believe on Him. And that's how, that's how you accept the payment. You come to Him as the guilty sinner that you are. It says in Romans 10, 13 through 14, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You see, the night I got saved, I realized I was a sinner. I knew the facts of the gospel that I just told you, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He was resurrected. And I came to Jesus Christ the best way I knew how. And I said, I, I want to believe on him to save me from my sins and from hell. And I believed from the heart that night and got saved. So it's so simple. The payment's been paid. God's wanting you to be saved. He's, he's got a, a stretched out arm with salvation right there in front of your face. You just take it. And it's as simple as just coming to him the best way you know how. When I got saved that night, I knew nothing about the Bible. I didn't know anything really about God or anything. But I knew I had it explained to me what Jesus did for me. So I just said, God, I'm coming to you now. I know Jesus took my place on the cross. I want to be saved. I'm putting my trust on Jesus Christ to save me. And just the same way, you know, you hear this, probably have heard this illustration a lot, the same way you're trusting in that chair you're sitting in to hold you up. You come to Jesus and you trust, put your trust in him to be your payment for sin. Quit trying to pay it yourself because you can't. You see, you, all this time maybe you've been relying on your own goodness to save you. You know, you as a kid you thought, uh, if you're good you go to heaven, if you're bad you go to hell. I remember thinking that as a kid. That's not true. The only goodness is Jesus Christ. And see, if you'll get saved... If you come to Jesus and get saved, you'll get the Lord Jesus Christ's goodness put on your record. And he'll take your badness off of your record. So therefore, when God looks at your record, all he sees is the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll no longer see your badness. And that's why you can go to heaven. It's because he's going to give you the goodness, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's so simple. Just come to him the best way you know how. Call on him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.